No, I'm not really concerned about Nate. He's gonna smell good this time when he comes out of the box at least. Recently on our main channel, we did some cool tests about how long a person could survive in a sealed box before the carbon dioxide content got too high for them to survive. We've got another test that we wanna try and we're doing it here. We wanna see how a candle affects the oxygen and carbon dioxide levels inside that sealed box. So I'm gonna be down in there with an oxygen monitor on my finger and the carbon dioxide meter running to see how quickly they change compared to when I was just staying still and not freaking out. Grace is gonna be monitoring my vitals. All right, so I need to get to a spot and then I gotta get this thing set up and I want it to be somewhere where you guys can see it, but also I can see it. We're gonna put it right by Nate's head. Don't let your hair catch on fire. Not my hair, not the blanket, nothing catching on fire is definitely the goal because it would be hard for you to get me out in time to put the fire out and I do not like that. That'd be terrifying, so let's it not would. do that. That's the hardest one, do that one first. Terrifying as that might be, I need to try and remain calm, so. You're doing great, Nate. Uh, so when we put Nate in the coffin, it was about 900 parts per million. It's already at 2,300 parts per million just for that short time that he's literally been in the box, which is crazy. His heart rate is incredibly low and his oxygen is decent. Uh, so I feel good right now. I'll be concerned once we kind of get a little bit farther into this, then I'll be more worried about these numbers, especially because there is a delay going from his oxygen levels to the iPad and what numbers we're seeing. So the second we see it drop a little low, out and it goes. Okay, something before we pull Nate out of this box, something that I want to look at is that candles use oxygen. That's how their fire burns. This candle is like really wimpy compared to when we put it in there. So that means our CO2 levels have obviously gone up and it's a great indicator. I bet when we open this up and oxygen floods back in or the air mixture mixes back in, that light burns brighter. So let's go ahead and pull this corner and see if that happens. I feel like it did. Maybe a little. I mean, we got a clear, we got a clear time up to 20,000, which is still something oh, very useful. Oh, look at it. This is going up a lot. Oh yeah. Let's say we call it at 20,000. That was pretty cool to see how much CO2 was in there and how it was putting out the flame. Oh, you smell nice and fruity. So the candle's oxygen noticeably was dropping. Yep. My blood oxygen hadn't started to change yet. No, it hadn't. The lowest I think I saw it get down to was like 95, 96. Yeah. But this light was obviously affected in the, yeah. from the oxygen. Yeah, uh, or so lack it, wasn't, of oxygen. it wasn't burning as much. I never personally felt any effects, but it, what, what was that? Did you say 17 minutes for it to get to, for it to, to 20,000? Mm -hmm. And so before it didn't get to 20,000 until about 40 minutes, right? So that's quite a bit of difference. I didn't notice the the light from the candle until I got up on you and I was like, oh, that is noticeably dimmer than when we first put it in there. So that was really cool to see. Yeah, and to me that's interesting because like I would have always thought, you know, if there's enough oxygen for a person to keep breathing, then there's enough oxygen for something to start burning. But like it was, dim it was going lower. The candle yeah. flames were dimmer and smaller in an oxygen level environment that I still felt perfectly comfortable at. So yeah, it's cool to see how much that was affected. There we go guys, definitive results about how a candle affects being in a sealed box. It really ate up a lot of the air and put out a lot more carbon dioxide. If you haven't seen the main video on our main channel, go check that out now.